All right, three, two, one, and we're live on HeroQuest fans. Sorry, everybody. Uh, we had some technical issues, and we've got Strange Bus with us here. And uh, go ahead, if you can hear me, Strange Bus. Oh, I forgot. I got to join into the. Uh, I think we got to go into quest talk here on Discord. So quest talk on Discord. If you want to join us live. Yeah, so let me just double check here. I think we were having some technical issues. checking the stream here just checking the stream here okay we got audio good we got video just checking the stream here okay we got audio good we got video just checking this okay so yeah um funny story the forces of chaos conspired against me today uh, i was doing a cleaning project it's taking a little longer than i thought and then on my way home there was this big uh street festival going on and so um, I had to find a different place to park my car and wander back home. It's pretty funny. So, yeah, after the stream, I'll have to go grab my car. But hopefully uh, nobody nobody flips it over or lights it on fire or anything. But anyway, um, we are going to play some Hero Quest, And I have, as you can see, I've already set up the Xanon Pass. And maybe this time we'll actually complete it. But uh, Strange Bus is going to be joining us. Uh, I believe he's doing a little intro on his side. And then we've got uh, PSK Studio Knucklehead is going to show up. I've actually been saying his name wrong. It's Knuckel. <laughs> it's uh, spelled differently. So anyway. So, um, but yeah, the thought here is we're just going to play Hero Quest live. And whoever shows up, we'll just kind of squeeze you in. So I'm going to be checking Discord and the Twitch chat if I miss you. I apologize, but yeah, we just had to get started late, so sorry about that. All right, so I'm just going to check the chat here. We've got Strange Bus. I see him there, and we've got another TV viewer and Sega Dream. So welcome to everyone. And we should be able to pick up audio from the Quest Talk in our HeroQuest fans Discord. And I think we're having some dropped frames. So I'm just going to restart the stream here. One second. And we're live once again. Sorry, we just had uh, some problems there uh, with our Discord crashing. So, uh, yeah, once again, uh, welcome to HeroQuest fans. Sorry for the technical issues. I'm just getting the Discord back on here. The plan is we're going to be playing HeroQuest live once again tonight. Uh, we got at least a couple people that are showing up. Strange Bus is one of them, and PSK is supposed to be getting off work at 7, so that's just in a few minutes. So we'll give him a few minutes. But yeah, we're trying to uh, play the Xanon Pass, Barbarian Quest Pack, the Frozen Horror uh, Quest 1. We got partway through, and we're just reestablishing connection. So can anyone hear me in the quest talk? Okay, so I'm just sending out a message. If you can hear me in the quest talk Discord voice channel, let me know. So uh, the story so far is that this is the first adventure, the Xanon Pass uh, over the Siberian Mountains range. This is the entryway into the three solo quests. 
that the barbarian was to undertake. However, after the deaths of several barbarians, uh, we sent a new barbarian and some guardian knights to try to um, bring their killers to justice. All right, we got Strange Bus in the quest talk. Excellent. And there's plenty of gold and plenty of loot to be found. So, yeah, week week by week. Now, next week, uh, we are thinking about doing something a little different. I may be playing some Star Wars games instead of playing HeroQuest, but we'll see. Uh, unless uh, we can kind of rearrange things, but that's uh, kind of still being decided. So something will be done, but it may not be a live quest uh, next week. But generally speaking, I do want to be able to do something like this. As long as other people are willing to participate, I'm happy to oblige. And hey, if this inspires you in your own channel to do something cool like this, go for it. I know other people have, have played, but you know it's a real trick getting everybody connected um, and coordinated and everything. So I understand. Okay, so I think we're just going to wait a few minutes here. So as awesome. they, oh hey, welcome, Strange Bus. Hi. Glad to have I you. I was just just getting set up. Ah, yeah. In the most fumbly way possible, <laughs> I uh, popped in and see got everything captured and. We're just uh, we're just ordinary folks here. We don't have you know multi million dollar uh, studios with. Um, well, okay, I don't, I don't, maybe I don't. And, uh, you know, huge, you know, crews and, you know, uh, production assistants, you know, helping us out. So we just, we just do the stuff as we, as we can. So uh, you're wanting to do some Star Wars games uh, coming up here? Yeah, so uh, for anybody in your channel who's interested... Um, in the classic Star Wars games next week, because I'm a big Star Wars fan, there's always going to be Star Wars stuff on my channel at all yep. times. Yep. Um, I will be doing a Star Wars Jedi Knight event on Friday, starting um, at 9 p.m. That's where I'm heading. That's my goal. And we'll be working on games like Dark Forces, Dark Forces 2. You've got uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, um, and then Jedi Academy. Nice. Um, these... I don't know if I'm doing mods for any of them all yet because I'm. Um, I think it's mostly going to be focused on uh, multiplayer. Hey. Um, but there will be single player stuff because the original Dark Forces is not multiplayer. So. Correct. Yeah. Well, and you're speaking my language because I know that um, I'll speak for myself only here. But so, some of us, uh, some of us Star Wars fans, have become a little cynical and jaded with some of the releases over the last couple of years and. Um, that doesn't mean we're not fans anymore. There's still cool stuff that we remember that we enjoy and maybe stuff that'd be worth revisiting. I was a big fan of, uh, I always called it JK, uh, Jedi yeah. Knight, but Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, which was the second game, which had the lightsaber in the force and multiplayer. And even though it was just a peer to peer game, and I mean, it wasn't as big as Quake, but it was really fun. <laughs> and there's guys that still play it to this day and they will smoke you. Um, oh yeah. So, in fact, um, I think it's the people you recommended years. me to. Yeah. Um, are one. I think a couple of them at least agreed mm -hmm. to join, and um, I'll be following up with them here soon. But yeah, those guys are serious business. I played oh, yeah. one round with them, and I was nine and twenty. Nine. So it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the old joke is, you know, if you go on and try to play Halo, it's like you're just going to get destroyed by somebody who's been playing it this whole time, mm -hmm. and and they won't even be like the best player in the world. That just they've just been playing for years and you have it. So, <laughs> but yeah, when, when it was, when the game came out, I remember playing it for three and a half years straight. I think it was Jedi Knight and then mysteries of the Sith, the expansion. And then when Jedi outcast came out, I think I played it for like three or four months and then I stopped and I missed a ton of drama that happened. And then Jedi Academy came out, you know, barely a year after. And then I played that for several years and I still have a server and I need to promote it more. <laughs> uh right yeah it's called kurgan's meat grinder kurgan's meat grinder and it's still up oh yeah and the reason i set it up is because you and i tried to play and we were just hosting it off of each other's pcs and so the person that was hosting it would be great smooth worked great and then the other person <laughs> it would be super choppy 
and people be like warping all over the place. See, Jedi Knight wasn't like that. You could, it was just peer to peer. Uh, There's no dedicated servers, which angered a lot of people at the time, myself included. Mm -hmm. But now we realize, oh, as long as you and your friend have a decent connection to each other, it's fine. You do have to compensate, uh, you know, back and forth. So it's like, okay, I see him running in this direction. I have to lead him with, you know, swing my lightsaber where he's going to be. And then even though it looks like I missed him, I hear a sound effect, which means, okay, I got his shields. Now if I can just hit him one more time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But in yeah. Jedi Academy, like the thing in, sorry, I, I'm getting off on a rant here, but okay. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll be brief. So Raven Software did a great job with the Quake 3 engine, I thought, doing Jedi Outcast, you know, adapting all the cool stuff that we liked into a new engine. And it wasn't exactly identical, but it was really, really close. And the community was split between people who just wanted to saber duel all day long and people who just wanted to fight. And it's like, okay, we're in the Star Wars universe having a first-person shooter experience. And so what Raven Software tried to do, you know, they had made Heretic 2, which was all about magic and fighting with a staff. And so it was like, oh, these are the perfect guys to do it. They set it up so that you could have a saber duel like in the middle of a battle and the two of you would be isolated from everyone else. It was like, oh, what a great idea. But the problem with Jedi Academy was the community was still divided because there were people that were just like, no, 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 no. This is the only way to play is to wait your turn to challenge the next guy to have a saber duel in the middle of a firefight. Yeah. So what I did... Yeah, they called it honor. You have to bow. Saber off equals peace. You can't kill someone with a typing. There was all this stuff. Like, you can only use certain moves. Because certain moves are considered dishonorable. So it's like, okay, do I use the backstab? It's like, no, no, you can't use that. That's that's cheating. And it's just like, well, what if I use the, you know, it's like, it just went on and on. And people made mods. Yeah, people made mods that, like, forced you to play a certain way. And I was just like, I don't want to do that. I just want to play Siege. I want to play CTF. I want to play mm-hmm. deathmatch, you know, free for all. Um, and yes, I do like the saber duels. I'm not gonna lie; I wasn't the greatest at them. But so I, I did the uh, Gergen's Meat Grinder, and I, you know, rented the server. And it took me forever to find like a good host because the people that I liked, Escape Turkey, they went down. And then it was like Violator, and their service was terrible. I guess it's gotten better now, years later. But at the time, it was just really bad because it was all virtual hosting wasn't very good but yeah blue fang productions not a promotion but so far they've treated me right and that server is always there so if you want to jump on and play you can i mean it's mostly running bots but it just has a regular rotation capture the flag um siege which is the objective based multiplayer and in between there's the dual maps and free for all mode which means you just got people spawning everywhere and just like hacking and slashing and body parts flying everywhere because it's just mayhem and once that round is over, then it transitions into the next thing. So anyway, you got me excited. Me and so you, I, uh, I had to. I had to info. Me and you need to hop on the meat grinder again sometime. Heck yeah, yeah. I think another big reason we had so, so much trouble too was the fact that I think back when we first started, I lived in a really, really weird part of town, and the only internet I could get, and I, I kid you not, folks, it was um, three meg internet. So it was. Yep. Pretty much the next step, next step up from dial-up connections. We won't, we won't say oh. the name. Uh, Dispromotion. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Let's just say. I, I mean, they mean, fixed it, and I got like, I got, I got a, uh, we got gigabit speeds later. But like, it was just the fact that for the first three or four years I was there, it was it was awful, awful experiences. Oh, so, yeah. well, but. And I mean, for online gaming, I mean, uh, some people, you know, they've just been they've been playing online games, you know for the last you know 30 40 years but for me no there were certain games that were special it was jedi knight aka dark forces 2 which i just called jk and Mm -hmm. there was jedi academy because yeah jedi outcast was cool but more for the single player i think whereas i really liked the multiplayer i liked just the whole aspect of you know you're in there and you might be losing the match you might be losing badly you know, it's like you play Unreal Tournament. You're like, I got to be the top of the leaderboards. You know, Quake 3, I got to be the top of the leaderboards. Whereas in, in these Star Wars games, it's like, okay, if I can just find the guy who's dominating and just challenge him. 
and just get one kill on him. <laughs> you know, saber to saber. It's like, yeah, that struck my ego. Yeah, and they, I'm fine. In certain servers, most people were watching that too. So yeah, there was a lot of like RP stuff around that time too. And there oh, was, the role players, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of like weird, like just the, just in general, like yeah. like I said, there were people who would just spend a good chunk of their time online mm-hmm. guarding the dual area. Which, like I said, my favorite area in Outcast was Bespin Streets, and it was oh, yeah. just you, pushing people off, the, the, choking people off the edge. Yeah, and they would do that platform, the hangar mm-hmm. platform for Bespin Streets as the dueling ring. Yeah. So you'd have two guys with sabers and they had custom animations. I don't know if it was a mod or something in multi. Yeah. I still don't know this day, but they would like I they'd can... be like folded. And like they would just stand yep. there and wait their turn. And we you'd can... go in there and they'd be like, somebody's dueling right now. See, I should be on your <laughs> oh, show. Get out of band. <laughs> we should do a stream where that's all we talk about is is all that stuff. Because yeah, they call them admin mods. It was like yeah. again, they created mods to try to force people to play a certain way. Certain people could basically designate themselves as the moderators, and they were invincible if they wanted to be. And they could like ban people. They could teleport people out of the map. They could, you know, change people's scores, like make it go up or down. Just all this weird stuff. Um, but yeah, I I just wanted to play the game as it was, even though like in Dark Forces Two, like you didn't necessarily at the start of the community you didn't have these dedicated dueling maps. I mean, it was mm-hmm. just like there were still like super shields and ammo and stuff like laying around. And so, yeah, you'd be trying to have a duel and somebody would be like, Hey guys. And like start shooting you. And you're like, eh. <laughs> of course, at least you could use force destruction to like blast the guy off of the platform into the, to the abyss. That was, that was a lot of fun. Hey, so yeah. I think I've, uh, <laughs> I think I've taken up a lot of your time with that talk. We do need no. to get onto it, but um, yes, we do. Yeah. Just, just well, we're kind of stalling for time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go, go for Just it. Remember, we are doing that event uh, Friday. I'm aiming for nine. If I end up doing it earlier or anything, I'll let the notification in my Discord. Um, yeah. And that Discord's in my stream if anybody does want to join, but that's where it will be hosted. Um, just like here. Um, so yeah, that's Central Time. Excuse me. So it is 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And um, the event will be posted in my Discord. So like I said, just like here, we'll be doing the voice chat in, in my Discord channel, and then we'll kind of start from there. Um, for like any cool. multiplayer events or anything like that. Awesome. So check out the strange bus on uh, Twitch, right? Twitch t- yes. TV slash the strange bus. And then I think both of us, both of us post our stuff on YouTube after the fact. So if you see it on YouTube, it's like, that's the replay. You that's not the you live. much quicker than me. Uh, I'm like still oh. two videos behind right now, but oh, it's man. because I, I have to edit and then I have, oh, I'm also see. having problems with YouTube because YouTube hates uh, yeah. six to eight hour long streams. So dang. Well, Hey, I, I, no one can accuse you of not having passion for what you're doing. So I say, just keep doing it. I mean, I, I thought I had to wait a long time, but I mean, I barely edit it all as you can, <laughs> as you can see. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have different approaches to what we do, but, I mean, much respect for what what you've put together, and I can't wait to see uh, how all that goes. Especially when it's you know games that I not only have played but like really care about. I mean, I played oh, Unreal yeah. Tournament, I played the WWE games online, and they were fun at the time. But yeah, what really brings me back is definitely Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. And it it was it was a kind of a, a wake up call because I I've been playing Dark Forces two recently. I did a stream of it last night. I got a raid during that stream, which was nice because I didn't expect it, but I was dying like none other. <laughs> and it was, it was really, I, I was doing horribly at it. Oh yeah. And it was, it just, it was so, so rusty at those games. I'm even rusty at Outcast, And that was like my, that was the one I played the most. Single I, player was where I, I was at in that t- game. Tell me something. Uh, when you hear the term griefing, do you think, oh, that just refers to where you're at. You're deliberately, deliberately trying to screw up the game. You're not actually like, so, <laughs> because I'm honest, I'm an honest lad. I try to be as honest as I can. Um, I used to be one of those guys. I'm not in Star Wars, but um, like places like Gmod and mm-hmm. uh, like I will, the later games. I, I will, it, If we're doing confession time, I will admit there was one time. Unfortunately, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, it was very easy to cheat. Um, it was very easy to mod stuff, which was awesome, but it was also very easy to cheat. And what you could do mm-hmm. is you could replace one of the most basic cheats that anybody knew 
was that you could replace your player model with any model in the game. And somebody had this idea that, oh, we'll all be like power-ups and we'll just sit there because what the power-ups would do is they would sit there and they would rotate around. Uh And so we just would, so there's this place, Canyon Oasis was the most overplayed uh, multiplayer map for Dark Forces 2. And there are these pillars and there's a pool of water in the center. And so there's all these like shield pickups and, you know, it's just a minor pickup. It's not even that big, but people would go and try to grab it. So we would all, we, there were several of us and we each played as a shield <laughs> and we just sat there where the shield would be. And we rotated our model. So it looks like we were the, the object. And whenever the real shield would appear, we would force pull it. So it would just like get sucked up and disappear. <laughs> so people would run by and they would like try to grab the shield. And they're like, why isn't it working? Cause they're just running up against our player model. <laughs> And it, yeah. it was it was so stupid, and we all got kicked out of the game. But it was so funny for like twenty. But that minutes. seems like that seems like crafty geniusness yeah. for like I mean, messing we, with people. We weren't trying to like, win. We weren't trying to crush the server. And it was just like we got kicked out. And it's like, well, of course we deserved it. But it was funny because people were just <laughs> like, "What the hell's going on?" <laughs> like, what's the only on? reason I didn't get vac banned on Steam for my account originally was um for like places like Gmod is because I had a friend who was just as worse as I was who would join in. And mm-hmm. take a lot of the fronts because he just created multiple accounts through Steam. But, and like I said, if you ever played Gmod between the years of what, like 2009 to 2012, I probably screwed up one of your yeah. days so, so because we were just okay. hopping in and messing with people. Are, are you? Are, are, do you repent of what you have done? <laughs> I mean, I haven't done it in such a long time, but See? <laughs> I, I don't regret it. If that's what you're asking, yeah. it, was, it was funny. I feel bad at times because, like, there were some serious. We there was were, a guy we who did like a dragon RP. Then. Yeah, he did like a dragon RP server over there in Gmod, and he had like some really cool models. But you could just spawn them like endlessly, yeah. and there was a button for it. And I remember that. And, like, I hid underneath the map, and my friend would walk around. And I was just, I got into a sweet spot where I could just hit the button and just spawn them. And I was lagging the server out and they kept blaming, they kept blaming my friend for it. And we were just laughing yeah. because after they banned him, I kept doing it Yeah. and they couldn't figure out who was in the room. And I don't know if they just didn't understand like yeah, how to do everything, but it, that's griefing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, was, I'll admit I, I griefed somebody at least once. Um, now the rest of the time it was people that like they would cheat. Like they would give themselves like weapons that were way stronger than any weapon you could ever have in the game. Like their concussion rifle would be firing like super fast, like a hundred times faster. And it, when you confronted them, like they would pretend they weren't cheating. And it was just like that was the kind of stuff that bugged me. Like I never did that. And <laughs> and in uh, the WWE games, it was really obvious. Like someone would like teleport like through the ring and like do a, do a finishing move on you like right at the start. And it was always Bro, funny when you could beat them, even though they were doing that. Like there was, Bro, a... I saw you, I saw you <laughs> open the console and put in SV underscore cheats one. Like... Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> People would type it in because they thought it was like single player that you could type in the cheat codes, and so you see them typing it, and you're like, "Come on, dude. <laughs> who are you kidding? Dev, dev map all, dude. Come on, for real. Help like... us, Ob Ob one one. <laughs> yeah." And in Hero Quest, I mean, uh, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. I mean, yes, someone could peek at your map. It's funny because the 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 quest maps, they they look like those um, security envelopes, like they've got the texturing on the on the first pages, and it's all in like red ink, so it can't be photocopied. I mean, those were like early attempts at it anyway. To, now you can copy everything easily, but I could just imagine a bunch of eight year olds sitting around, and it's like, okay, guys, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and they're like peek at his map (laughs) quick quick, get the map get the map of course nowadays people could be sitting at the table and somebody's got their smartphone out and like oh oh, hold on a second okay yeah yeah sorry i was getting a text that's when you go like when you you bring them through the door you have this big tub and you're like everybody put your phones in here yeah yeah (laughs) no phones at the game table phones and and, oh smartwatch smartwatch goes too yeah it's like the tsa oh (laughs) you got to take your shoes off okay hold your hands up rotate around okay and good no mini cameras all right, open your mouth, shine the flashlight in. Okay, all right. You can come through. swabbing him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little metal ticker. Yeah. But but the... is this necessary? Come on, man. <laughs> no, I just I just like 
you know, being a, a petty dictator at my game table. No, the, the thing about uh, hero quest is it's very easy to modify stuff. So you can just be like, oh, you know, there's like five traps in the room now. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. When I looked at the map, it didn't show. Oh, it's like, gotcha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we are, I think we stalled enough for time. Uh, thank you for that conversation, Strange Bus. Um, let me yeah. see if PSK is on his way. I don't know what he does for work, but I know at our work, um, it's very common that, you know, you'll be you'll be done. You're like, okay, I'm done in five, four, three, and then somebody gets your attention. And you're like, oh, man. And you're there for like 15, 20 minutes yeah. later. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Nothing you can it's do about to, it. Like rack up the small amount of overtime. It's, it's like, really hey, helps. I'm I'm still getting paid, but uh, yeah, yeah. kind of kind of wanted to be home by now, but that's how that's how it works. So especially when you're back in the office, it's or if you got kids, you know everything's fine. Kids are off, you know, doing that. Ah, I, I cut my finger. It's like, whoa, how did you how did you get into that stuff? Like what? <laughs> and so yeah, anything can happen. That's another big thing is like, you know, since I have kids and stuff like that, once we officially go back to the office, at least my my department does, it's going to be kind of uh, uptight. Like, I'm going to get that call right at the end of the day. I'm like, oh, no. Kids sick. Oh, no. Got into fight at school. You know? <laughs> yeah, like stuff like that. And like, it, you just need you need to be home now. Yep. Sort of deal. Yeah. You're like, well, uh, sorry, sir. Um <laughs> my connection's bad <laughs> uh, you're breaking up yeah. uh, gotta go. a tunnel. <laughs> you're sitting on an office desk how do you know uh <laughs> yeah i'm sure plenty of people can identify with that you know whatever whatever you're in you know the guy's uh he's trying to get extra fries with his big mac and you're like come on dude i gotta get home somebody uh, i quit yeah. i quit <laughs> <laughs> one of those one of those calls oh, just kidding just kidding just... I, I i didn't quit you know kids okay i didn't quit <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still here i'm still here i'm still working overtime baby yeah let's get those fries going <laughs> oh man yeah okay well uh let me just see i hope i'm not missing something i don't see him in the chat um yeah, we got three. As far as I can know, we got three people. So us uh, okay. plus one person, I think. Oh yeah. So welcome, Duani. Duani. So yeah, I, I realized I was saying his name wrong this whole time. So Knuckles, he spells it like Knuckle, <laughs> which is uh, kind of cool. So I, I changed it on the character sheet. So I think um, Strange Bus, I sent you the information just so that you can see like where your ca character is. So oh you, yeah, hold on. Give me one second, because I, I we can clip. You this sent it to me personal, right? Um, I think I sent yeah to your uh, DM. Yeah, I got it. They call it yeah. Okay, so we've got Strangeth Bus the Barbarian. Uh, he's got three attack <laughs> dice because he's got a broadsword. Two defend dice, which is standard. Eight body, two mind. Hasn't lost any um, health yet. He's got two hundred gold coins so far. Not, not shabby. Um, now that isn't enough to buy much at this point, but we'll see how it goes. I'm realizing because there's three of you, really, we're going to be dividing the treasure into three, so we got that to contend with. Um, you've got two abilities or skills, I would call them. You got the dodge and trip, which allows you to sidestep a single opponent's attack and take no damage, and also cause him to lose a turn, which is pretty awesome. And you've also nice. got, and this is some, a skill you can use at any time. And uh, Mighty Blow, which allows you to, okay, so you attack, and you can multiply by two the final die results and apply them against your opponent. So those will come in handy. Now, uh, our two uh, knights each have three abilities each. And so PSK... Um, now, his friend uh, Blue Star won't be here this time because he's got uh, an event going on. But uh, okay. we'll we'll see. But each of the knights have three abilities There's um, or skills. There's a shield block, which allows you to basically, if you're adjacent to, to another hero, you can just take that attack and just wipe it out. So it's just completely absorbed. 
these are all single use, of course. And then stalwart, which let's say you get killed, so you get reduced to zero. Actually, you've got one body point left. So that's a nice one. And then knight's challenge, which says that if a wandering monster event happens, you can say they attack me instead of the person who triggered it, which can save your bacon. Now, one of the guys oh, does have... Expression. Yeah. <laughs> one of the guys has heroic brew. So now if he's not in the game, we should probably give that to one of the other heroes. Okay. Because heroic brew allows you to attack twice. Yeah. So uh, any questions about that? No. Uh, since you're pretty much be rolling and stuff for me, I'll just keep an eye on my cards and then just ask questions as I go. See, we're going to slowly like build it up. Like we're going to have you 3D print a board and you're going to get like each of the figurines and <laughs> you're going to be cutting tiles out of cardboard and you can get your kids involved, you know, safety scissors and you know, you're going to forge some dice. Actually, I thought you did have some dice or are they I do? It's just the fact that I have to find them. I have to find them there. I think they're in one of the boxes in my uh, storage unit oh. or in the storage room in the, in the house. It's just I have. <laughs> I have almost zero time to go digging I, through that area. I have thought about ordering some dice for you, but then I'm like, well, but what if you know you don't have time to play? Then it's gonna feel kind of. And silly. here, where I'm stationed at, rolling them would be extremely painful because oh. I'm surrounded by technology. If I roll it and it goes behind my desk or something oh, like man. that, I'm like, it's okay, oh, hold on. Your cooling fan. It's like, chunk, 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 chunk. Oh no! This, this two, this two turned into a ten. <sighs> yeah, because it. <laughs> well, there is. I, I did find an application that's for virtual dice, but honestly, it's so much more fun to just, just to do that, you know. Right. So I don't mind. Well, okay. so I can kind of see what you're doing, and you're pretty good at like, you know, telling telling me how things are going, and it, it's nice just watching it happen. So. Yeah. So all right. Well, I guess we will just go ahead and keep an eye out for. Uh, any other players that are coming. But yeah, PSK, um, I was asking him if he had any suggestions because he does a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff and he was showing me this program called uh, Forge. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it, Hero Quest fans, I, I don't mean to... You've got a, a guy in here who says, uh, great game, played as a kid years ago. Now I play with my 15-year-old son. Ah. So, first time chat guy, welcome. Thanks. Beastman0219. That's awesome. No, thank you for alerting me to that. I was going to say, thanks, man. Yeah, so Beastman0219. <laughs> uh, Played as a kid years ago. Yeah, and, and, and actually, that is such a common experience that I hear. I mean, when I was on the Covert Nerd podcast, to plug him a little bit, and he interviewed a few of us, um, and I think he's doing more. Um, it was That was a very common thing. It's like, People remember playing HeroQuest back in the day and, you know, playing with their friends. And now it's like, now you get to introduce it to your kids or your grandkids or your niece and nephews or whatever. I mean, I've introduced it to other people and um, it was really cool getting to show it to you. And I know that you've played a little bit of role playing yourself. You played some Star Wars. Yeah, so I was DM for, um, I believe it was 3.0. Uh, D and D for because that was the uh, the stuff that I pretty much just originated at for Star Wars Dungeons and Dragons, nice. and then I I did an alteration to it which I guess some people do like and some people don't. It's kind of diversified when you uh, you kind of mess with the Dungeons and Dragons formula, yeah. but I did kind of like a Kotor change to it where I added dark side and light side points to your actions. Now is that so? Forgive um, me. Uh, is that D six or is that D twenty? That'd be D twenty. D twenty. Okay. Because I, I actually picked up the old West End Games Star Wars RPG. I got it more for a lore because I, since I was dissatisfied a little bit with the new canon, I guess, of Star Wars, I thought, you know what, I want to go back and see, kind of refresh my memory on a lot of this old stuff. And, but then I thought, well, I could play the game too. You know? But I guess, uh, I guess that's... Tell me if I'm wrong about this. That Star Wars RPG, the, the D6 from the 80s that one was actually the ghostbusters rpg and they modified it into star wars oh, and now maybe the license is expired <laughs> and so it's now like a generic space galactic are you space, talking about uh, are you, are you talking about x-wing 
Well, it's not it's not X Wing. It's it's the Star Wars RPG. Uh, yeah. Um, because there was a couple different ones. There was a miniatures game. There was um yeah. like a pencil and paper game, which is the one I'm talking about. Then there was the D20, which was Wizards of the Coast, I think. Um, and then now there's a new miniatures game and some other stuff that I don't. Yeah, and there's a, uh, yeah, I guess it's an X-wing game. But this one was for like '87. Oh yeah. Um, if I ever played it, I was way too young to remember. I I think it was an alteration. Like a lot of Star Wars RPGs are kind of alterations of their, yeah, of former RPG games. Like yeah, um, Ghostbusters. Even the <laughs> Even the modification I made was just uh, I took I took uh, inspirations from Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk game and did that. Oh, cool! And added that in because that's just a formulation from D and D as well. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's really cool what you can do. Is you just add you just add pieces onto your game. You just have to write down what you're adding and make sure it stays consistent. Yeah. Because if you're the DM and you're you know making a story and then all of a sudden you forget like something important happens in this event. And let's say your players actually for, for the love of God, follow that event and you miss something that could like change a play. Like for me, it would change a, a player's alignment. So they could go to the dark side or they would, um, like I said, I had things where if you made too many bad decisions in that game and you gathered too many dark side points, you, uh, acquired a, uh, I think it was like a skill or something that pretty much you were, you made things, you made actions on impulse that would mm-hmm. either turn you to the dark side completely, or you'd be a, you would be a villain. You could be a villain. You could be against your teammates at that time. So you'd be playing against the teammates trying to accomplish that goal. Oh, interesting. I had a Wookiee do that one time. Like, see, I have a philosophy about those games. I just say, let the Wookiee win. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be so interesting um for the sake of our audience i think we should transition back into our main topic but clearly we've got other topics to talk about but yeah um i would like to i mean with respect to everyone who likes the new canon i would like to go back and play the star wars rpg from 87 and only think of stuff that existed at that time and then just make up the rest <laughs> oh just from 87 oh, yeah you're missing so much good eu yes but at the same mm-hmm. time you can it, anything can be possible so it that would certainly mess with a lot of star wars fans because they'd be like wait a minute that that planet should be there <laughs> it's completely blown away so you, destroyed I was say, yeah, if you're going back to 87 you're <laughs> man i think you're you're missing some prime some prime well, star wars in the, there like, your favorite from, shadows of the empire wouldn't be there so maybe we could yeah. push it out to like what was that 90 95 or 97 fall. probably yeah yeah Special edition. At least to the point to where Kyle Katan got those Death Star plans. Yep. Kyle delivers the plans, and shortly thereafter, the Death Star is destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I, I almost remember it. Yeah, Dark Forces, now that was a game, but I, I played that one a lot more after I played Jedi Knight. It was just like the demo that I played. a lot Back then, a lot of games, I just played the demo, and that was it. Because I didn't uh, save my pennies to play the full version. Well, anyway... Oh, I Let's... got really far in that game. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, we will we will definitely do that. So that's a preview of things to come. So next weekend, uh, the Strange Bus will be doing some hardcore Star Wars action. And you I'll, bet I'll try to be a part of it because I I definitely got to get my system uh, ready to play a game from 1997 um, and uh, early 98. So you want to borrow my uh, my 6800 GT? Oh. Is that my uh, GPU from like 2001? Don't you have a I'm Pen- just kidding. A Pentium, <laughs> Pentium 2 that I can play it on? <laughs> yeah. No, it, the Pentium it's still, 2? It still runs. That thing it, ain't going nowhere. It's, it, it does, yeah, it does still run. It. Yeah, it still runs efficiently. The fan makes a little bit of noise because everything's all those parts are original. But like, <laughs> um, yeah, she still runs Windows 98. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, the people paid for HeroQuest. So let's let's give them some HeroQuest. All right. Oh, I'm getting a message from Knucklehead, and he says, "Ah, he's still driving home." Um, let me just give him a message. We started late too, so you come when you're ready. Yeah, I'm actually thinking that we should go ahead and start, but we'll just squeeze him right in. 
it's so funny because uh, yeah. last time it was just kind of like he's like, nope, can't play at all, can't be here. I mean, you got you you um, promise low, deliver high, right? And then he was right there and he was with us the whole time. It was like awesome. 